A variable temperature measurement program can monitor the CD data at a single wavelength as a function of temperature. To set up your parameters, either click the parameters icon or go to measure parameters. The parameters menu box will now pop up and the first tab selected will be temperature. The start temperature specifies the temperature at the start of a measurement. Selecting reverse performs a reverse measurement after an increasing temperature measurement. The hold time is the amount of time before the reverse measurement begins. You can select up to five wavelengths to monitor your CD signal at. Each row corresponds to a new measurement at a different wavelength. The interval is the temperature interval at which a data point will be acquired at the specified wavelength. The target temperature is the temperature you wish to hit and should be slightly higher than what you expect the melting temperature of your sample to be. The gradient or heating rate defines how quickly the temperature will increase every minute. You might need to play around with this parameter if you do not have a good idea of the sample's melting temperature. You do not want to heat the sample up too quickly so that an accurate melting temperature cannot be obtained. The wait time is the period before the next measurement begins after hitting the target temperature for the specified wavelength. This time is dependent on how long it will take your sample to equilibrate if you are performing a subsequent measurement on the same sample. The control sensor selects the sensor to control the temperature, which can either be the cell holder or the temperature probe in the cell. The monitor sensor is the current temperature of either the cell holder or the temperature probe in the cell. Selecting halt temperature ramping will stop the temperature change during the measurement. In the start end tab, you can specify the starting and ending conditions of the measurement. Prior to starting the measurement, you can either select to keep the temperature within a specific range of the starting temperature for a specific amount of time, or start the measurement after the temperature crosses the target temperature for a specific number of times. Once the measurement is complete, you can either return the temp to the start temperature to check if the sample can refold, keep the temperature at the end temp, or move the temperature to a specified temperature. The General tab allows you to specify how many photometric modes will be measured, along with their settings. You can select up to four channels where the data will be acquired simultaneously. CD is the circular dichroism signal. LD is the linear dichroism signal. CD over DC is the same as the CD signal when DC is set to 1 volt. This mode is useful when the DC varies with the sample absorption and the HT is fixed. UV single converts the DC signal to either absorbance or percent transmittance. Both the HT and DC modes monitor the photomultiplier tube voltage. HT is the high tension voltage and controls the gain. Gain is the amount of current output for the number of photons reaching the detector. When a lot of light hits the detector, the gain and therefore the HT are low. The less light throughput, the fewer the photons reaching the detector, and the higher the HT and larger the amplification of the signal. DC compensates for the change in the light level. When the DC drops, the HT adjusts the gain to increase the DC output. The CD scale is the limit at which a CD signal can be obtained, and the fluorescence scale is the limit at which a fluorescence signal can be obtained. The DIT is the digital integration time, or the response time. The longer the integration time, the better the signal to noise. A good starting point for selecting the DIT is 4 seconds. The bandwidth determines how much light reaches the sample. The smaller the bandwidth, the less light throughput, and the lower the signal to noise, but you can achieve better peak resolution. However, since CD peaks are broad, 1 to 2 nanometer bandwidth is fine. This table allows you to input wavelengths to monitor the CD signal at. Up to 5 wavelengths can be monitored. Now we can click on the Control tab. Here you can select whether you would like to correct the CD sample spectrum with a baseline spectrum. If you choose to correct with the baseline, you will only have the corrected sample spectrum, not the raw sample spectrum. You can also choose to open and close the shutter automatically. The Information tab allows you to populate the desired fields such as sample name, concentration, and solvent. These comments can also be displayed in the Comments dialog box before the sample measurement. 
All information provided here can be later viewed in the Information tab in Spectra Analysis for each spectrum. The Data tab allows you to select whether to automatically save your data, as well as to specify which folder to save it to in the format the file is saved as. Saved data can be sent directly to Spectra Analysis once the measurement is finished, or to the Thermal Denaturation Analysis program to calculate thermodynamic parameters. You can also choose to save your measurement parameters as well as open previously saved parameter files. Click OK to set the specified parameters. A spreadsheet is now populated with the wavelengths being monitored in their respective temperature ranges. At the top of variable temperature measurement, the starting wavelength, temperature, and values for the photometric mode selected will be displayed. To begin your measurement, make sure your shutter is open and select either the baseline or sample measurement icons in the menu bar.